Glory America. I'm Hugh Hewitt, Bonjour High Canada, inside the Beltway again. I I was sort of blessed by being forever in an airport and airplanes yesterday, so I didn't have to consume news media, which was ubiquitous at the airport. But um, got back late last night and did a little show prep, and then got up early just to see where the timeline was on the the massacre in Uvalde. There's other news, of course, and I'm going to talk to Sunny Bunch and Dr. Larry Arndt today, but my first segment is 11 minutes long. I'll be talking to you for 11 minutes, and and that's the time after the killer crashed his truck before he entered the school. So he just crashed the truck, and when we go to a break, commercial break, he will be entering the school. The key details, and there's going to be a lot more. Yesterday, I wouldn't comment on anything. I'm still not going to comment on much. I'm going to invite your comments at 1-800-520-1234. 1-800-520-1234. Um, he crashed the truck at 1128. Uh, 911 was called at 1130 with reports of a man carrying a gun around the school. At 1140, he entered the school. So by the time I'm talking, he uh, he crashed the truck at about the time I started talking to you, and he will enter the school at the time I go to commercial break to give you a sense of how long it is. He's walking around the school. He he shoots at the funeral home. At 11.42, after he entered the school, a Facebook notice comes from the school that uh, there's an active shooter. Uh, At 11.43, uh, they say the school's locked down, excuse me, 11.43, one report says at 11.44, shots are exchanged between law enforcement and the killer. At noon, uh, kids are breaking out and, uh, and getting out of windows and running from various parts of the school. Um, and then at 12.58, approximately an hour and a half after he crashed his truck, Border Patrol uh, storms the classroom in which the children have been murdered and the teachers and kills him. And there's a Washington Post timeline that I've linked to and there's an AP timeline that I've linked to. There is quite a lot of controversy about this and I, 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 there will be more. There will be more and there will be more. Um, the most controversial thing <coughs> was sent by Lieutenant Christopher Olivares of the Texas Department of Public Safety last night uh, to Wolf Blitzer and poorly chosen words at a moment like this do have a terrible lasting impression cut number 20. so what we do know uh wolf is that there was multiple officers that arrived on scene there was three officers that arrived that made entry um at one of the entrances where the gunman actually made entrance to we had other another four officers that made uh entry at the other entrance of the school so there was officers inside that school as they were taking gunfire they were also calling in for reinforcement uh, backup, tactical teams, uh, snipers, any additional personnel that could arrive to assist to not only with to with the situation, but also to assist in evacuating uh, students and teachers. At that time, that's when a U.S. Border Patrol uh, tactical officer arrived, also with a Zavala County Sheriff's deputy, as well as two additional uh, Uvalde Police Department officers were able to go into that classroom uh, with a ballistic shield as cover. And of course, we know that one of those officers, an agent actually was uh, was shot, uh, was grazed on the top of the head, but they were able to shoot and kill the suspect and pre- preserve any other life. We know that there was other injured children inside that classroom that they were able to save as well and get them to and get them to cover. And at that point, it became a recovery process, a rescue operation, trying to rescue the injured and also any other potential children or teachers that were inside those classrooms. But don't current the best practices, Lieutenant, call for officers to disable a shooter as quickly as possible, regardless of how many officers are actually on site. Correct. The active shooter situation, you want to stop the killing, you want to preserve life. But also, one thing that, of course, the American people need to understand is that officers are making entry into this building. 
Uh, they do not know where the gunman is. Uh, they are hearing gunshots. They are they are receiving gunshots. At that point, if they if they proceeded any further, not knowing where this suspect was at, um, they could have been shot. They could have been killed. And at that point, that gunman would have the opportunity to kill other people inside that school. So they were able to contain that gunman inside that classroom, uh, so that he was not able to go to any other portions of the school to commit any other killings. Okay, so that is un the unfortunate attempt by the spokesperson to say, we got in, we got him surrounded, we closed in as quickly as we could. Uh, there will be professional critiques of that, and I'll talk to you about it. I do want to point out that the failure of the school resource officer should not indict the idea of school resource officers, and so let's stop calling them school resource officers armed police at schools. And I repeat, there are 131,000 schools, K through 12, public and private in the United States. Uh, you're talking about um, an outlay of about 45 billion annually to put two heavily armed, very well trained uh, policemen at each school in America, which isn't a bad idea in any event, even if you don't think your town's ever going to be targeted. Uh, I think they deter a lot of bad behavior, but they're there to primarily prevent this. We've had four major shootings that resulted in double-digit deaths. Newton, Newtown, um, Sandy Hook, I should say. Sandy Hook and Uvalde are the elementary schools, Parkland and Columbine are the high schools. But there have been other, other shootings. Oscola, Florida, was limited to one student being injured because of the school Russo officer taking down a killer. Dixon High School in Illinois in 2018, a police officer confronted a gunman before anyone was harmed. Another would-be shooter in 2018 in Maryland was stopped by a school resource officer. In 2021, a school resource officer stopped a shooting at Hinckley High School in the parking lot. In 2013, at Arapahoe High School in Centennial, Colorado, um, Kari Pearson tried to commit a mass casualty. It lasted 80 seconds before a school resource officer confronted. Tragically, there was one student killed there. This is a Matt Vespa article in Town Hall. Here's a three-word policy that's been effective in stopping school shootings. And to me, this is obvious that the first thing... Now, I believe in red flag laws. I, I believe they can be constitutionally drafted. They wouldn't have caught this individual. He was the night manager at Wendy's. He's a, he's a, a monster, but, but it's hard to distinguish monsters sometimes until they are actually violent. Um, long profile of him. In the Wall Street Journal, the gunman um, came from a broken family, unsettled classmates and co-workers with aggressive behavior and disturbing social media posts. He gave me such an odd vibe, a 17-year-old junior who attended his high school. He seemed scary. Well, you can say that about a lot of high school students, and you wouldn't want a red flag order out against them. Um, but he was, he was violent. He would scratch, harm himself. His TikTok videos show him punching a wall and saying he'd take out anyone who messed with him. In another video, he's seated in a passenger seat holding a bag with what appears to be a dead cat in it. I mean, it's all pretty obviously when you look back. Annie had an exchange on Facebook with a girl. Uh, it's a, it's an alarming set of circumstances. It's an alarming uh, response. Um, I'm not interested in all the leftists so I can play them for you if you don't. don't we don't, people are already lining up to call. Very predictable call and response from the left wing about we don't need more guns at school. Uh, that, that's the one that I just, the only thing that works are guns at school. Um, uh, Alex Padilla, Senator Alex Padilla, cut number six. We're outraged. And no, putting more armed adults in schools is not the answer. If more guns was the answer, the United States of America would be the safest nation in the world. But it's not. It's the only I, country where students go to school fearing for their safety. It's the only country where people wonder about their safety going to a house of worship. So only right, I, I, I've heard enough of Alex Padilla. The answer is indeed more guns at schools in the hands of highly trained, courageous police who are uh, ready with backup there. So I say two at every school. It's 262,000 people. 
and the federal government can get red law red flag laws passed tomorrow if they use the approach they used with raising the speed limit to 55 here's the money for your highways but only if you're at 55 here's the money for your policemen at school but only if you have a red flag law uh, I do think that that's got super majority support in the United States and we ought to focus on what is possible and the fact that the Second Amendment is in the Constitution you can try and amend the Constitution if you want that will not happen so I'm trying to be just perfectly down the middle with you folks. Bad, bad, bad news all around as we study this. What do you think? Give me a call. I'm Hugh Hewitt. The massacre next hour. But I want to talk with Sonny Bunch about Top Gun because it's in theaters and people are wondering whether they're going to go. I think they're going to go. And I want to know what Sonny Bunch thought. Good morning, Sonny Bunch. How are you? Uh, I am doing well, Hugh. How are you? Good. Uh, it's a grim week for talk radio, and I'll go back to the grim stuff. Will this be good escapist theater for people? I think so. I think so. Look, uh, I um, I have always been a little bit skeptical of the uh, original Top Gun. You know, look, I'm I'm I was I think three or four when that movie came out, so it was not you know a huge part of my teenage years. Right, it was not a, a seminal seminal moment for me. Um, so I came to it a little bit later. And the thing about Top Gun is that it is uh, it has a lot of great. Uh, amazing visuals right it is it, people joke about it being military uh kind of you know a military recruitment ad but it is it is basically that and it's a very successful uh, uh version of that um but the story itself is very is somewhere between mediocre and non-existent i mean the, the the story of the original top gun uh is stitched together entirely with voiceovers uh with you know characters saying like all right here's your mission you got to do this and then this, and then we're gonna we're gonna get you on the top of the leaderboard. In this movie, Tom Cruise returns as uh, Maverick Pete Mitchell, Captain Pete Mitchell. Uh, he has to go back to Top Gun to train a uh, a bunch of pilots who have previously won the the Top Gun uh, competition to do a very dangerous, very difficult mission against the enemy. Quote the enemy unquote. You know, this is one of those movies that does not. Uh, you know, pits America against Iran, despite the fact that this is a mission to take out a illegal an illegal uranium enrichment enrichment plant. Right? Ah, it's, it's okay. like a very it's it's a fairly uh, if if you're if you're looking at you know uh, contemporary enemies that it might be it's it's pretty clearly a stand in for Iran. Uh, but nobody nobody wants to even I anger, uh, anger the Iranians. So you know it's they're just referred to as the enemy the whole time, which is very funny. But at the, at the, it's a story. It's an actual story. It's an actual plot. With you know you have uh, a problem. You have people who are trying to solve the problem, and then the problem uh, is either solved or not at the end. I don't want to spoil it. You know okay. who, knows, who knows? I haven't seen it. Don't tell me. Yep. Uh, but it is it look it's an amazing looking movie it is a it is much like the first top gun in that it is uh at its best when you are playing around with big giant airplanes uh doing enormously uh fun big airplane things big dog fights big you know bombing runs uh this movie this movie culminates in what amounts to uh Luke Skywalker's attack on the death star um, you know, they have to make a very tight run down a very narrow valley that is surrounded by SAM sites. And, you know, there, there are fifth generation fighters in the air trying to fight them uh, and blow them out of the sky, blah, blah, blah. It's, it's really, it's a lot of fun. Like it, this movie is, this movie is the sort of thing where, uh, you know, I, I saw it with probably a slightly older audience than your average blockbuster, you know, Mm, old, uh, upper 30s, lower 40s, definitely some folks in the 50s and 60s, and it's the sort of movie where every every once in a while people would occasionally just you know start clapping because it was so 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 much fun. Um, so uh, I I I give this a very solid recommend. You're gonna want to go see it in IMAX or Dolby Atmos or you know where the biggest screen you can find it on. You want to go, you want to experience it. That way, it is a big, loud movie, um, and I, I actually did not see it on an IMAX. I had to go see it at kind of a normal theater just because of how my screening schedules worked out. And I will, I will be making it back to the theater myself uh, in, in on my own dime and on my own time uh, to see it in IMAX. Oh, at some point you know, the 
It was the U.S. Navy went all in. This is not CGI land. This was filmed on the no, TR yeah, using is, active duty squadrons flown by active duty F-18 pilots. Yeah, so this is this is shot with real life F-18s. Uh, there, I mean, I think they got something like 150 hours of footage in the air, or something like that that they they condensed down to you know probably 40 45 minutes of uh, of actual in the air action. Um, so yeah, this is not this is not a CGI movie. I mean, I'm sure there is some CGI action in it. Don't you know? We shouldn't uh, we shouldn't kid ourselves on that. But it is it, there's there's tons and tons of actual filmed you know action, which again it's it's very much a throwback to the original directed by Tony Scott. Uh, and and again, the best stuff in this you know people joke about uh, Top Gun being a recruitment ad for the Navy, but the best stuff about the original Top Gun, the stuff that still holds up today is all of the recruitment ad stuff. Because, look, uh, airplanes, giant fighter jets are pleasing to look at uh, and watch maneuver and do all of their stuff. It just, that is, that is, they are aesthetically pleasing objects. Um, and it is... And the professionals who fly them are superb professionals. Yeah, I mean, I like, you, you, when you watch these guys do what they do in these airplanes, it's amazing. It's guys and gals, really I'm going to point that out. There are, a lot of, there are a lot of women F-18 pilots out there, and they're very, very good. Uh, Sunny Bunch, uh, we will, I will look for your review of Top Gun. Is it in the post, or is it at Sunny Bunch? Where, where is it? Uh, it's, that's Bulwark. It's, oh, at Bulwark. Bulwark right now. And then also his two podcasts, The Bulwark Goes to the Movies, and Across the Movie Aisle with Sunny Bunch. I'm coming back for your phone calls, America, 1-800-520-1234. On the massacre in Texas, after this, stay tuned. I'm Hugh Hewitt.